What is up, Bitcoiners? It's CK, and I just had a great conversation with Simon, the co-founder of the Liquality Wallet. Liquality is the premier cross-asset uh, wallet in the Bitcoin and greater crypto ecosystem. They're really, really focused on going deep on Bitcoin, but enabling you to use your Bitcoin using cross uh, native atomic swaps to get in and out of any other crypto asset, including liquid Bitcoin, including our Bitcoin, and eventually will include Lightning. So uh, they are going deep into adding Bitcoin atomic swaps for everything, and they really want to create appealing products for Bitcoiners. So right now they're offering really easy atomic swaps into RSK Bitcoin, and then entrance into, let's just call it DeFi on Bitcoin or DeFi for Bitcoin on RSK. Um, but they are going to be rolling out liquid and they have their eyes looking at lightning. They're also trying to highlight and make it really easy for users to interact with the Bitcoin blockchain in novel ways that are completely native to Bitcoin. So that means batch transactions, that means multi-sigs, that means proof of ownership without actually having to, you know, send Bitcoin. You can just the wallet lets you do, boom, I approve this amount with a signature. Uh, so things that were once kind of only technical users, command line users could use these features of Bitcoin. They're trying to highlight them in the wallet UX, and they're really, really focused on UX and simplicity. Uh, so I thought this was a great conversation. I'm going to check out the Liquality wallet myself. Uh, so check it out. Before we get into it, though, I want to tell you about Bitcoin 2021. It is going to be the biggest, the baddest, the most important Bitcoin conference in history. I mean, I'm so proud of our team. We have such an amazing lineup of speakers. Michael Saylor, Jack Dorsey, Cynthia Lummis, the mayor of Miami. He is a king in really pushing Bitcoin and crypto forward, really defending freedom, allowing us to actually have the event at the uh, in Miami. He is going to be speaking at the event. And there are so many more incredible speakers already confirmed. Go to b.tc forward slash conference. Check out the entire list. Check out tickets if you haven't gotten them yet. Man, prices have gone up a lot. I'm sorry. I've been telling you about this conference for like six months now. And I mean, when I was telling you about it, it was like 250 bucks per ticket. They're like a thousand bucks per ticket. We are offering $200 off if you pay with Bitcoin. So if you pay with Bitcoin, you do get a discount. And we have another discount, promo code Satoshi, to save you another 10% off. So really encourage you, if you haven't gotten your ticket yet, don't wait. We will 100% sell out. This event is going to be the biggest event since the Super Bowl in Florida. Like, it's going to be absolutely bonkers. And uh, man, if you're trying to get into the Bitcoin space, if you're trying to close deals for your company in the Bitcoin space, this is the best place to be. It is well worth the money to be at the Bitcoin conference of the decade and to be in Miami during Bitcoin week in Miami, June 3rd, 4th and 5th, be in Miami, go to b.tc forward slash conference, get your tickets today and save 10% with promo code Satoshi. All right, let's get into this awesome podcast with Simon from LaQuality. Bitcoiners, welcome to another episode of the Bitcoin Magazine podcast. I am sitting across screen from Simon Lapsher. He is the co-founder of Liquality. Liquality is an awesome multi-chain atomic swaps wallet that is really keen on making Bitcoin as interoperable with the entire blockchain and crypto ecosystem as possible. Um, I'm really excited to have Simon here uh, as we've been kind of diving into uh, Bitcoin interoperability in past episodes, uh, and he is definitely on the forefront of leading that battle. Simon, welcome to the Bitcoin Magazine podcast. Thank you, Christian. Super excited to be here. I appreciate the time. So for the listeners who may not be familiar with the quality, atomic swaps, interoperability, why don't you kind of give us the, the or get them up to speed? Yeah, no, for sure. So like quality really started out of, you know, everybody involved in the team really admired and were, were really passionate about Bitcoin and what Bitcoin had done to payments, which was removing intermediaries out of, you know, out of the payments ecosystem so we could have peer to peer payments. But the reality is that the world uses different forms of value. Uh, there are there are people, you know, and, and and there are different blockchains. There are different assets. There are 
that that need to be exchanged. And so we saw that the the one of the biggest bottlenecks was that when all of these forms of value interacted with each other, you still had to go through a centralized exchange through a trusted third party, uh, and and that creates a complete bottleneck. Those trusted you know financial institutions intermediaries create bottlenecks in the system uh, for a variety of reasons and so what we wanted to do was prove that if you have two different forms of value uh, in two people that don't know or trust each other you can exchange with one another without the need for a trusted third party uh, and so that's what started liquidity that's how we got into cross chain atomic swaps Basically, you know, if you have two different blockchains uh, that speak different languages, how do you get, you know, two users? If I have Bitcoin and you have Ether, uh, to to exchange without having to go through a centralized exchange, without having to let go of the custody of the keys, respecting the principles of Bitcoin of, you know, openness, censorship resistant, borderlessness, accessibility, and and so that's that's what got us in the journey. Uh, we then built uh, the wallet that we launched in September, which is a multi-chain wallet. And the, the, the idea here is to be both the liquidity network that allows users to exchange, you know, to, in, to basically exchange value between these different blockchains. And at the same time, be the most beautiful single interface for all of crypto. And that, you know, if you're a Bitcoiner, you, you, there, there's a chance you don't like to use other chains. You probably just want to stay in Bitcoin for valid reasons. And so we want to provide you with the best, you know, wallet experience for Bitcoin, where where you can use Bitcoin and you know in, in the in a browser extension wallet and eventually a mobile wallet to send receive. But you can also use Bitcoin to, for example, make browser payments. And so for everybody that makes payments directly from the browser, you have to pull up your phone. Now with the Liquidity Wallet, you can essentially use that same kind of like MetaMask-like functionality for pop-up payments. Uh, but at this, so that's one of the things we are. Uh, but you can also use it for DApps like Sovereign, which live on Layer Two of Bitcoin on RSK. And so there's a lot happening now in the Layer Two ecosystem of Bitcoin. And essentially, we want to provide the single consistent experience for everybody to use it. So for listeners out there who are familiar with like the Ethereum ecosystem. I think it's fair to say that MetaMask is kind of like the premier, the the main browser for the Ethereum ecosystem. Um, it, are, what you're trying to do is you're trying to attack that for Bitcoin and, right? Effectively, it's Bitcoin and all the things that you can, uh, you know, trustlessly uh, use Bitcoin. And uh, I know that Generally speaking, it's not been easy to go from Bitcoin to RSK. Um, I know, you know, blockchain is, or sorry, a block stream is working hard to make it easier to go from Bitcoin to liquid Bitcoin. Um, but that's, there's still friction there. You have to use a blockchain wallet or a block stream wallet. Um, I guess, can you kind of talk about that a little bit more specifically? Like, where is Bitcoin right now in terms of operab- uh, interoperability and um, and UX around that? And, you know, how is this an opportunity for the quality? Yeah, um, so I think that a lot of different chain teams, whether that's in Bitcoin or outside Bitcoin, usually tend to have a very isolated view of their own needs and not so much thinking about it from the user's needs. And so, you know, the RSK team had created an RSK wallet, which is a, a decent wallet. It's called R Wallet, right? But it it only does RSK stuff. And same same thing with the Blockstream guys. They they I think they they're using our chain our uh, library or chain abstraction layer. I, I'm not 100 percent sure how much of that they use. But they've created a really nice it's the Marina wallet, which is a really nice liquid uh, wallet. But the the reality is that the end user isn't just a liquid user. Isn't just an RSK user. And most users aren't just Bitcoin users, right? You want to be able to provide, abstract away the complexity and have kind of like a bigger uh, picture understanding of what's going on in the space so that you can really provide that beautiful, consistent experience that seems to the user that that it, it's just seamless. They're all living inside the same space. If you fragment that into five different wallets into 15 different wallets for some you know crypto users that are using other chains uh, it becomes just such a such a pain uh, to to use crypto 
And, and so if, if we can abstract away some of those complexities, I, I think we have a real shot. And, and I think that's what's missing is, is that that focus on the user uh, to, to really provide that next level of, of ease to, to provide, you know, a, 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 yeah, uh, to, to make the user feel at home when they're using all of these different products and, and, and so that it, do, it doesn't feel foreign. And, and it, I think we're just starting, by the way. I think the, the Liquality Wallet is just a start. Uh, I've heard from, for example, Bitcoiners that they, they want to have the ability to, you know, put their Bitcoin in, into something and, and then take, take out yield only in Bitcoin, even if in the background there's something else, right? And I think that's part of the things that the Liquality Wallet can achieve because we have that connectivity to atomic swaps inside the wallet. We can essentially do and abstract away the complexity for users and basically just have you deposit Bitcoin. And we, in the background, the, the Liquality Wallet will take care of the necessary processes and transactions to, to basically you know, deposit that into a yield generation contract that could be on Bitcoin, could not, could, could, could potentially not be on Bitcoin either. And then when you're ready to extract that and to, to withdraw that, we can do the process in reverse without you having to really, you know, have to figure out how, how to do all of the process. Yeah, um, that makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. And I really like the focus on, you know, creating a complete wallet, right? I feel like, like you're correct, you know, uh, I think the M, the Moon Wallet, M U U N, you know, they're inter they're getting a lot of uh, kind of hype right now, and their interface is really clean because they've made one interface for on-chain Bitcoin and Lightning Bitcoin, right? Mm -hmm. No two mm -hmm. wallets, you know, like right now, Blue Wallet is a popular wallet, but you you literally have to you have like you know your on-chain wallet, your Lightning Wallet, your multi-sig wallet, and that's a good interface for some use cases, but in terms of simplicity, user experience. Uh, dumbing it down, abstracting way, is this lightning, is this RSK, is this liquid, is this Bitcoin, like, you know, how is this being sent um, or leveraged? Um, you know, I, I like that vision and I like that liquidity and you are kind of taking that to the, you're, you're even expanding that more, right? To the, like, almost like this galaxy that is kind of being built around Bitcoin, maybe, which is at, which is at the center. Yeah, and... Absolutely. Absolutely. And I also think, yeah, I, I you know, I, I think that the complexity of under, of having to figure out a lot of the technical depth uh, has been a, has been something that has been inculcated in the Bitcoin mindset, which I think is definitely a the right mindset to have like basically like so much knowledge of what understanding the protocol really understanding the technology i love that that the bitcoiners i meet always go deep and really understand what's going on almost always at the protocol level but the reality is that if we want to scale this that's not going to be the case uh, for for everybody right we have to you know every, everything if if web 2 has has shown us an, anything and web 3 continues to be the case is that convenience always wins it's it's all about convenience and so if we can provide a really good convenient product experience that does you know better does something better is more secure it provides more more uh, 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 a yield that is based on sound money, uh, then we can win and scale. Uh, but it has to come first through a layer of convenience of incredible user experience. And I, and I think that's where uh, we, we focus most of our, our time in. So I guess like, let's zoom out on the Liquality product and roadmap. Can you kind of just talk to me about, so you know, obviously Liquality supports Bitcoin. It's supporting liquid or it supports RSK today. You know, what's mm -hmm. kind of like the vision around like the, the like, let's just call it the Bitcoin maximalist ecosystem. And then what's the, what's, and then what's the vision around like, let's just call it the broader Bitcoin and crypto ecosystem, tapping into Ethereum, tapping into Near, tapping into all this other like stuff that is is being built and, and, and invested in. Yeah, no, great question. So hey, can I share my screen, by the way? Is that, is that, uh, will, will, will that work? Yeah, you have permission now. Okay. Uh, so let me first talk about the, the Bitcoin, my, uh, you know, vision a little bit. Uh, it's, it's very similar to the rest uh, of the, of the, 
the rest of the chains essentially because we we think that every chain deserves to have its full functionality in the wallet and then if as a user you want to interact with other ecosystems you should be able to as well and so it's kind of like we we want to provide the full functionality of each chain living in a consistent you know easy to use experience alongside many others and so you know the the, the first thing is that we are working on uh, so we, we work really closely with the RSK team and the Sovereign team uh, to improve uh, the liquidity and the on and offboarding between our, our BTC and our BTC. And I think we're doing a good job of that, but I think there's so much room for scaling as Sovereign continue and other RSK dApps like Money on Chain continue to grow. Um, and for example, with Money on Chain, we're helping them uh, next week with their token generation uh, event where you know the, the the easiest way to access uh, that those tokens are through the wallet because at the end of the day the user only needs to download the wallet fund it and you can do bitcoin to you know rsk20 like the erc20 of rsk uh, tokens directly right and so there, there's no friction you don't have to go from bitcoin to rbtc and then from rbtc use a separate platform for getting these tokens you can just go in one click using the wallet from bitcoin all the way into these B- bitcoin Based tokens that are sitting on top of RSK, and um, and so that that's the first part is just improving what we already have. Uh, I think adding other networks uh, and layer twos is really important, uh, and so we're in constant communication with you know the the Liquid team and, and the Volpen Volpen team to figure out when's the best you know time to in, introduce Liquid into the into the wallet as well. And I think that Lightning is something we keep a, a constant eye in. Um, we haven't seen it be ready for the use cases that we want to build. Uh, and so we're waiting, basically we're relying on other people to build out some of the technology that is required for us to really implement at the wallet level. Uh, and, and so we're, we're kind of like on standby pattern with Lightning. Uh, but then there's so many other things we want to do. So this is where I wanted to share my screen. So basically, you know, I and let me connect my wallet because I think it's in mainnet right now. Um, okay. So, you know, th- this is our playground for Bitcoin and this is a proof of concept of some of the things that we want to start playing around with and become, make, make these into real uh, products. So this is my, uh, it's asking to connect, right? This is pinging my Bitcoin wallet. Uh, and essentially getting in similar function to MetaMask, but now everything's on Bitcoin. So this is on testnet. This is my Bitcoin testnet address. And I can do all of these things directly from my Bitcoin wallet. So I can make a payment uh, request. And so let's say I want to pay this address and I want to pay you know, point, point zero 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 one Bitcoin to this address. I can either scan a QR code or I can, I can pay and the liquidity wallet is, is pops up and makes the payment. Right, and so now browser payments become super easy to do uh, in in uh, in big in for for Bitcoin in the browser. The second thing we are looking at, so somewhat basically increasing the the complexity of what the wallet can do in terms of Bitcoin. So time locking, right? Basically, you know, this is my my wallet address. I want to lock, you know, point two Bitcoin. Uh, for the next week because I'm traveling and I don't want to have access to these coins or I'm hold, you know, hodling for the next five years. And so I want, I want to not have the temptation uh, to, to look at my Bitcoins. And so I, I'll time lock these uh, into a Bitcoin hash time lock contract that I control, but that only will get, that will only get unlocked after a certain period of time. So this is, a, again, a proof of concept, but something that could be really powerful. We've thought about ways of gamifying this so that, for example, you time lock with your friends and whoever you know leaves last pays a penalty that gets distributed to your friends. Doing, doing some of those kind of like cool, uh, really gamifiable mechanisms that the wa- without the wallet, it's really hard to do. So uh, I, I can name a few more like, you know, proof, proof of funds, doing multi-send. This is, this is a use case that has been, you know, really key. So basically from one UTXO, how do we make you know three payments at the same time in one single send? And so yeah, basically, I put in three different batch transactions directly from the wallet. Super easy. Yeah, this is really cool. I mean, yeah. so for example, like 
you know, there are wallets that like, I think this Spectre wallet is a great example where they've highlighted some of Bitcoin's native, let's call it smart, smart contracting, obviously payments, uh, multi-sig, the multi-send, the batch transaction. Uh, they've also made it really easy, like one click audit the blockchain just because that's a meme. But mm -hmm. I do like how, you know, I see CoinJoin is down there at the bottom, um, you know, time lock, yeah. uh, right to the chain, proof of funds. You've highlighted other, let's just call it native smart contracting functions uh, on Bitcoin uh, that, you know, maybe other wallet uh, developers haven't necessarily taken advantage of yet. Yeah, absolutely. I think there's so much more that can can be done in the Bitcoin space, and this, we're we're just starting to explore. These are so the, these are proof of concepts that our developers put together in their you know in their in their nights and weekends essentially. Uh, but I think that as we uh, you know have more bandwidth to 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 explore, we'll we'll take these on one at a time and essentially integrate them into the functionality of the wallet uh, and and work them into into real life use cases because I think that. Specifically, the Bitcoin inject the payment is, is makes so much sense. The multi-sig part makes so much sense. The multi-send is already a use case that people struggle with, uh, and and you know we we can have the best user experience for that. Um, and so these are these are some of the things I'll st I'll stop sharing now. But these are some of the things we're thinking about in terms of Bitcoin. Uh, the second aspect to your question which was the more broader cross Wait, so question. actually before oh, before yeah. we get into that i actually want to focus on bitcoin a lot more um For sure. do you mind sharing your screen uh can you give us a quick demo of let's just call it the 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 current functionality of the liquidity wallet i know atomic swaps are already live that kind of stuff um yeah no i'd love to um and so this is my can you see my screen is, is this good yep yeah, so this is my liquidity wallet. I'll just show you from the beginning. Uh, basically, you know, I uh, create uh, on onboarding. Of course, uh, you need to uh, write your seed phrase and and secure it. And so this is my. It has mainnet functionality and testnet functionality. Basically, the idea here again is to have all of my different assets in different chains living side by side. Uh, and this is already an older ver version. We're releasing one next week with multi-account and ledger integration, uh, which is really important, of course, for the security of, of signing transactions. And so we, I have here Bitcoin, I have Ether, ERC-20s, and I also have RBTC, uh, right? And so in this case, you know, the, the, what the wallet does really well is that it allows me to have everything in one place consistently. So when I send, I, I just choose which asset to send. I don't need to figure out which chain I'm in. I don't need to change custom RPC parameters, right? I just go here and if I want to send RBTC, I'll just send RBTC. And if I want to send Bitcoin, I'll just send Bitcoin. And so basically, you know, I can set the speeds for, for the, the um, transaction that I'm sending. And so I can send, I can receive, I can inject uh, so that I showed you, you know, the, the injection fun functionality for these Bitcoin applications, but I can also go, you know, to sovereign uh, and essentially, uh, oh, I think, uh, I think I'm on the wrong, uh, yeah, I'm on the wrong network, but I can connect my sovereign, uh, my liquidity wallet to the sovereign application. And then the biggest, you know, functionality that our users have been using is the swap. And so essentially we have built in cross chain atomic swaps. So if I want to go from Bitcoin to RSK, you know, RBTC, uh, because I want to use sovereign or money on chain or all of the other applications that are being built on RSK, I can just come here. Basically, I can also choose to, if I don't want to keep my funds in, in liquidity, I can choose to receive at an external address that can be a ledger. Uh, I choose the network speeds on both sides. And then I just initiate the swap. Uh, and that's really all it takes from the user perspective is that one click uh, to do the, the swap from BTC to RBTC. Uh, what's happening in the background here is that we're using hash time lock contracts uh, or HDLCs. And so what the wallet's doing, and, and this is really important because we really focus on the note no intermediation, no, not having a trusted third party. So my wallet in my browser is talking to our open source protocol called the chain abstraction layer, grabbing the latest template and deploying a Bitcoin contract on its own. And so the, 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 
the actual Bitcoin hash time lock contract is not deployed by liquidity. It's deployed by the user through their wallet, and it's a single use per transaction contract that gets destroyed after every contract. So it maintains the the security uh, and the safety of the swap. And so I'll, I locked my Bitcoin on one side, then the market maker will lock their RBTC on the RSK side. And then once those two escrows are confirmed, my wallet will automatically trigger a claim transaction uh, that basically re, you know, t- claims my the RBTC from the market maker and the market maker will claim from my Bitcoin. Uh, and so that's that's kind of like the 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 way the mode of operation, um, and 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 yeah, that that's more or less what the wallet's doing today. Something that's really exciting for me to talk about is that. So let me show you a completed swap here. So basically, this is a Bitcoin to Ether swap. If I if you see here, the wallet did one first Bitcoin transaction to lock their Bitcoin, and then it did a second claim ETH transaction on the Ethereum network. That means it did two transactions on two different chains, but under one single user click. And so what we've built here is a transaction automation capability that goes across chains. And so what that means is that we can externalize this and use it so that developers build their own kind of like cross-chain workflows uh, and simplify the user experiences down to one click. And so an example of this could be you know, I go from Bitcoin and do a cross chain swap into RBTC and then deposit directly in the sovereign pool and get that sovereign, you know, LP liquidity proof token, liquidity provider token. And all of that uh, can be uh, can be basically bottled into one single user click. So there's a lot a, a lot here that that this will help us uh, for the user experience. That makes a lot of sense. And yeah, I mean, I, I figured that that was going to be the case. If you, you can stop sharing if you want now. Um, yeah, I, I figured that that was going that that was going to be the case for a lot of kind of let's call it smart contracting for Bitcoin. I thought that it was going to be abstracted away to the wallet layer to the application layer. And, um, you know, users aren't going to have to see, you know, what's kind of happening. And a lot of that logic doesn't have to be on the blockchain, right? Like, you know, I feel like a lot of things are happening in the ETH ecosystem. Yes, they're working on layer two, but it's still putting things on the blockchain is almost like part of how the Ethereum ecosystem works, where I feel like Bitcoin and kind of like what you're describing with this atomic swap workflow is really about like pushing everything away from the blockchain that doesn't need to be there. Any logic that doesn't need to be there, take it away and just have the minimal transactions that are needed. Yeah, yeah, I think it's a it's a combination. You know, that transaction automation capability is happening all on chain. But the ability for the wallet to have the workflow and to not understand the workflows is is happening all inside the wallet. And the ability to really monitor, you know, monitor those cross chain interactions is is happening inside the wallet. And and I just think that my my take is that wallets will eat everything else. I I, I don't expect there to be a lot of front end uh, interfaces to to different protocols because I I just think that wallets become Wallets have the signing ability. And so if you have the signing ability to do multi-transaction, you know, complex operations that doesn't exist anywhere else outside the wallet, then it, it makes perfect sense for all of the functionality to just move move inside uh, inside a wallet that, that can offer the best user experience. All that makes a ton of sense. So I guess, can you, yeah, I guess now, you know, we have about 10 more minutes. What's like the greater vision, right? You touch, you, obviously the quality is a, is a full multi-chain wallet. Can you kind of talk about like, I guess one, like, you know, the extended ecosystem that you're tapping into. And then two, like, how do you, how do you keep the quality? Like, how do you manage all of the complexity of multi-chain without, you know, taking away um, from security and and all that kind of stuff, because you know we've seen exchanges really be the victim of this. They're trying to list as many coins as possible, and like that adds a lot of attack vectors. Yeah, that's a that's a huge uh, issue. So let me start by the by the vision. I, you know, we as the as a wallet operator and as a multi chain wallet operator, we have to go where users are. Right. And, and the reality is that users are, are now 
in a multi-chain future, there are many different blockchains that have real usability, uh, wh whether that's, you know, whether you agree with their architecture principles, whether you agree with what they're building uh, or, or, or that that's a real use case. You, you know, I think there's a, a lot of real growth happening in the overall crypto space. Uh, and so, you know, our, our goal is to provide, again, that single consistent experience so that we can be the single interface to crypto for, for users. And so what that means is that we're going to be including more chains. And if you don't want to use them as a user, if you're a Bitcoiner and you just want to have a pure Bitcoin wallet uh, that deals with RSK, that deals with Liquid, Lightning, that's you, you can have that option and you can disable everything else, right? You don't you don't need to interact. But if you do, then we also provide you with a way of you know generating yield in your Bitcoin through Badger DAO on Ethereum, right? And, and we will do the same with so there, there's a lot of yield generating opportunities now on Polkadot, for example. And so we'll be integrating Polkadot uh, for those cross chain swaps so that if if Polkadot users want access to Bitcoin. They can have it if Bitcoiners want access to yield yield opportunities in wrapped assets in Polkadot. They can have it. It's not ours to decide what the user wants to do. It's ours to provide the functionality to the user so that they can decide for themselves. Um, and so, in terms of uh, you know how do we maintain security, we operate on standards. Uh, and so, wherever we 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 built this thing called the chain abstraction layer. Uh, and what it, it's an open source protocol that essentially it removes the complexity of talking to many different blockchains at once. And so for every blockchain that we add, it needs to conform to the same standards essentially as all the other ones and make sure that all the tests and integration uh, integrations are passing so that we can build it into the stack. Uh, and further than that, we build standards for these hash time lock contracts. So HDLCs are you know relatively old, proven technology uh, that it, to be the most secure way of swapping between two different assets. And so we build those standards on each chain that we uh, integrate into to make sure that they're speaking the same language. There's nothing that could go wrong there because the, the HTLC itself is, um, you know, is, is the same on every chain. And so, uh, you know, there, there's definitely consensus uh, differences, like consensus mechanism differences and security principle differences. And so we'll take those into, into account in a variety of ways. So one of those could be, for example, the market makers could uh, ask for more blocks uh, in terms of final to, to prove finality for different transactions. So for example, Bitcoin, we only do one, but RSK, we do three or five, right? Because it, it's, it's, it, it, it requires longer, you know, more blocks for for finality confirmation. So those are some of the things that we can implement. Uh, but the, re, the the good part here is that there's no dependency on a single chain uh, to, that that makes security more more vulnerable. So if we integrate a new chain that is not as secure, and you as a Bitcoiner don't want to use it, the fact that we integrated this chain has nothing to do with your the security of your Bitcoin side of the wallet. It lives entirely in, iso in, in its own isolation, but inside the same consistent kind of like experience bucket. Does that make sense, Christian? Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. And I, I really like the idea of, you know, it's about atomic swaps. It's about that time lock, uh, the hash time lock contract. And, you know, obviously that's already been established on Bitcoin's tread and true. It's probably established on a lot of the more mainstream chains but you know maybe there's other chains that you know you guys are building that standard reinforcing that standard and then um utilizing the atomic swaps it's kind of like this you, you uh, this like i guess it's like this you this layer where anything can kind of swap for each other um nick batia um he wrote a mm -hmm. book layered money and he talks about this as you know the future of money is bitcoin's kind of like this base layer and then all other central bank any other entity token money whatever that can be and other assets can be directly atomically swapped with bitcoin um so it's mm -hmm. that feels like liquidity is building towards that vision today um i guess i have one last question and then you know we can we can be close this one out be be but before before mm -hmm. you get to that one because uh, that something that you said made me think of this we posted a a thought the other day of like yeah i i think everything will exist with a backing in sound money and so you'll have kind of like that back your wallet that is 
based on Bitcoin. And then you'll have these assets that are built on other chains that are going to, it, it, may, it may be built on Bitcoin layer two or layer three, uh, like RGB. It may also be built on Ethereum, like a, you know, like a CBDC central bank uh, digital currency that you need to use to spend in your local currency. But the reality is that, you know, you'll only spend that uh, at the moment uh, of, of, of spending, right? You're, you're only atomically swap out of Bitcoin when you absolutely need it. And the wallet, uh, you know, because of that smart automation capability can do that for you in the background so that you don't ever have to know what's happening. Uh, and, you know, one of, one of our early team members, Alex uh, H- Havoc, uh, used to say, you know, B- 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 Bitcoin is my, you know, th- thick layer and uh, you know and, and fiat is my thin layer right kind of like bitcoin is is where where i live and then the thin layer of of the thin client is where i need to kind of like swap in and out awesome uh i i like that analogy you know uh, store of value but and then kind of like a higher velocity layers on top of it um, my last question was about, okay, you're supporting all of these different chains. You're optimizing for qu- cross chain, uh, atomic swaps and liquidity, um, with the hash talk, hash time lock contracts. Um, but when it comes to like a Bitcoin only wallet, you showed some really amazing features. You're trying to highlight, um, Bitcoin native smart contracts. Uh, I guess, how else are you going to, um, you know, keep the wallet competitive as a Bitcoin only wallet. And uh, most specifically, I'm, I'm kind of interested in uh, what your plans are with a coin join implementation. I'm not sure, um, you know, what, what kind of details you have uh, planned out there? Yeah, listen, I, I think that we can provide a competitive, we can keep being competitive in terms of a Bitcoin wallet because we will provide the best user experience. And, and I think, re, you know, you can add tons of functionality I- I into a wallet, but as long as it doesn't feel right, uh, then, and it doesn't provide the best user experience, users will, will continue flocking to convenience. Uh, and, and so, you know, I, I think that um, we will continue striving to integrate some of these uh, functionalities. I think what, what you saw is just the beginning of like, you know, providing really complex transaction types inside the wallet so that it we, you know, we, we bring as many Bitcoiners in as possible. So like that time locking feature, playing games with those time locks and uh, doing the multi-sigs, doing the multi-sends. Uh, CoinJoin, you know, we, we, we're just starting to think about, but, it, but it's basically, you know, it, it's something that could fit right into the wallet as to how, uh, you know, we, we transact with privacy, right? How do we go down the privacy route? And, and something that could be really interesting, you know, the real prototypes of uh, Monero and Zcash atomic swaps have started uh, popping up. And so, you know, Bitcoiners, not, this is not necessarily purely Bitcoin, but I, I think there's a, a, a big overlap between, you know, privacy coin users and, and Bitcoiners. And so providing that atomic swap capability could be incredibly interesting if we if we can do it directly from the wallet in a, you know, super convenient liquid way. Um, and then lastly, I think we're going to win in the interoperability space. I think we're best, be, the best positioned for that bigger picture of, you know, in the same way that we've been building multi-chain, we've been building multi-layer, right? And so that very easy interoperability with RSK, now when we add liquid, when we add lightning, you have all of your Bitcoin needs inside just one wallet that looks and feels like you're just playing with one single ecosystem. You don't, you're not, you're not going out and going in. You're not, you know, but yeah, you're, you're, you're not confused. You're just using the applications. You're not thinking about what's happening in the background. We're doing the thinking for you. And, and so that, that, that's, I, that's, I think how we went. All right. So I'm sorry, I'm going to, I have a few more very specific questions. I think our users, our listeners are going to care about first is yeah. any plans to integrate full node usage or full node for Bitcoin. Absolutely. Uh, we already do that with most of our applications. So we have a web application uh, and a market maker application that you can basically connect your own node to. And so that, that will be something that will be coming into the wallet as well. Wow. So you're holding back. You have a lot of other uh, products that, that Bitcoiners can tap into with the market maker. I might have to have you back on just to talk about the the greater liquidity uh, suite. 
but um, I, I do have more questions about the wallet. I think that I think that I think the market maker one and providing liquidity from uh, from the wallet directly is going to be a, a massive uh, win. But yeah, keep going. Uh, next is um, uh, partially signed Bitcoin transactions and like that standard because that makes it like right. I saw that you have Ledger right now. Ledger is probably the only one that doesn't do partially signed uh, Bitcoin transactions. But like you know, you could pretty much integrate every single wallet into into the solu- hardware wallet into the solution if you have PSBTs. Uh, do you have any plans to integrate that? So we have other plans to integrate other uh, hardware wallet solutions. The reason why we focused on Ledger is because the w- Ledger allows us to configure the P2SH uh, signing, so pay to script hash, which is what we use for hash time lock contracts. Uh, and Trezor doesn't do that. And uh, most of the other major ones t- still don't do that, uh, which baffles, it, it really baffles me why, you know, why they don't, because it, I think it's becoming a, such an interesting use case. Uh, and so with more demand, they'll probably do it. But yeah, I mean, it, PSBT is not, not in our immediate roadmap, but I think it's something we could do as well. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess my last question was when cold card, just because that's the the Bitcoin Maximus favorite wallet for for hodling. Uh, but PSBTs are kind of necessary for that, so um, yeah. I guess eventually. And 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 to be completely honest, we a lot of our roadmap is based on what users are asking us for, right? And so we we listen to our users and what they tell us and what they want. And we kind of like combine that with our understanding of the world and what we want to see in the world and what where the where the activity is at. And so I think that if you know I, I'm looking forward to the day where the number one you know feedback request is integrate cold card, right? And, and which means that we have a ton of Bitcoiners inside the wallet using this and 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 being being active users and loving the product. Uh, and so it, we're not we're not there yet, uh, but I think we can be. Okay, very cool. I mean, it makes sense that you know Ledger. If you're going for the atomic swaps, Ledger is the is the multi coin wallet of choice for sure. They have the best support. Um, but yeah, Simon, thank you so much for coming on to the show. I thought that this was interesting. I would love to have you back on to talk about the the greater the quality ecosystem and kind of that uh, roadmap as uh, things kind of escalate. I'm sure that uh, maybe in a few months, uh, you'll have a lot more updates for the audience. <laughs> but until then, where can people follow you? Where can people learn more about LaQuality? And you know, what would if you could get Bitcoin Maximus to you know start messing around with the Wallet, what would you have them start doing? Yeah, uh, so I'm at uh, at Simon Lapsher, Simon Lapsher in Twitter. Liquality.io is our website. It has links to you know our Telegram community, to our uh, Twitter as well, and so check that out. We have a a pretty good blog as well where we describe what we do in more detail. And for Bitcoiners, I think that you know if you if you make Bitcoin payments, just a, just very simple. If you make if you made a Bitcoin payment, then you should use our wallet to to do it. I think it's a much better user experience. Uh, if you want to play around with uh, with some of these DeFi on Bitcoin applications that are being built, like Sovereign, and um, you know we've gotten a a significant amount of users from the sovereign community and they love our wallet because it's it's just you can just go from bitcoin into our our bitcoin in one single click and try out the application directly with the wallet it has kind of like that complete package so yeah i would say try try out sovereign try out money on chain uh, money on chain has a good interesting capability to go long bitcoin uh, and so if you're trying to go long um you use our, you know, use our wallet to go into the money on chain platform. I think that those are some of some of the interesting use cases that are now starting to be being built in DeFi for Bitcoin. Uh, I think there will be a lot more, uh, but but for now, you know that it's it's a it's it's very powerful as of now, and it will only continue to get more powerful. Awesome. Well, Simon, thank you so much for coming on to the show. I really enjoyed this conversation. And like I said, you'll be back on the show again. Excited to keep diving into uh, the RSK ecosystem and let's just call it the greater Bitcoin ecosystem. So uh, before that show, I will definitely download the quality wallet <laughs> and uh, and check it out myself. Uh, so 
uh, listeners, I encourage you guys to do the same. But until then, you know, make sure to give us a like, make sure to give us those five star reviews and make sure to share this podcast out across the interwebs. Peace. Thank you. Take care.